We're outside the federal court, and the verdict is in, and the verdict is guilty, guilty, guilty. I don't have enough time to say guilty as many times. Shelly Murphy, your take on this. Well, I mean, I think that... You know, Whitey was convicted of enough of the murders that he will spend the rest of his life um, in, in prison. But there was some disappointment by some of the families. There were a number of slayings that they, the jury found were not proven. Most of those were the slayings that the jury would have had to believe John Matarano. In order to find him guilty of some of the murders, the jury would have had to believe the word of John Matarano. John Matarano you know, admitted to killing 20 people. He implicated Bulger in many of those. And he's a free man after serving just 12 years. And the and the murders that the jury acquitted Bulger of or found that they were not proven tended to be the ones where they would have had to have relied solely on the word of Moderano. Um, but even having said that, the jury only had to find Bulger guilty of two racketeering acts in order to convict him of the overarching racketeering count, and that they did. And they found him guilty of the drug conspiracy, the money laundering, and they did find him, you know, at the beginning of this trial, the two things that Whitey most wanted to refute was that he was an FBI informant and that he killed women. The jury could not agree on whether he killed Deborah Davis. That count rested solely on the word of Steve Flemmy, uh, but the jury did find him guilty of the murder of Deborah Hussey. And so that was a pretty significant finding. They also found him guilty of the murder of Tulsa businessman Roger Wheeler um, and, and the number of the murders that surrounded that count. So this was a pretty significant victory for the government, although certainly some of the families are bitterly disappointed that they didn't get the verdict they hoped for in, in the murders of their loved ones. I spoke with Steve Davis, the brother of Deborah Davis. Uh, obviously, his family's disappointed. But Steve also was very realistic about the evidence that was used um, in this case. Uh, and he took some comfort, some solace in the fact that it was not a not guilty. It was a no finding. Basically, the jury could not decide based on the evidence provided by Steve Flemmy, some of the hearsay evidence provided by others, such as Kevin Weeks. Uh, they decided they could not issue a finding on that. That, crushed, uh, that was crushing at one level, but Steve Davis also understands why the jury reached that verdict. And he also understands that he knows in his heart that Whitey Bulger and Stevie Flemmy plotted to kill his sister, and he can live with that. The other thing that I think we should remember on this day, that Whitey Bulger came in here trying to get his legacy back, trying to get his reputation back. His reputation isn't worth much as he walks out of that courtroom for the next to last time. Court, a courthouse named after Joe Moakley, his neighbor in South Boston, whose mother used to ride home in his car, a car bought with proceeds because Whitey Bulger is a criminal. He was a criminal back then when he gave Mrs. Moakley a ride home in the 40s. He's a criminal today. He's a convicted criminal. He's a convicted murderer, racketeer, and extortionist. On his way out of the court, courtroom, as he was being led away after being convicted, he gave the thumbs up sign to his brother and two nieces seated in the front row. And at that point, the daughter of Eddie Connors, who was gunned down in a phone booth in Dorchester back in 1975, yelled out, rat a tat tat, Whitey. Now, what that was about is she was referring to a jailhouse conversation where Whitey was caught on tape joking about that slang, basically mimicking the sound of machine gun fire. And, and that woman, Cheryl Connors, said she wanted to get the last word. She didn't want to, you know, bear the thought of this, you know, Whitey walking away smiling out of the courtroom. Sentencing is now scheduled for November 13th. They think it will take three days. They'll probably have a whole day just to hear statements from victims' families. So it, this is not over. But he does face life in prison just based on the convictions here today. He was convicted of 31 of the 32 counts in this indictment. This is Shelley Murphy for the Boston Globe.